Hi everyone and welcome to the Treaties Experience Creator full tutorial. Uh, this is going to be a full and long tutorial on how to create your experience. Uh, be sure to hit the subscribe button on the bottom, uh, give us a like, share our content, and please tell us what you thought about this tutorial in the comments below. So before we dive into it straight away, I just want to give a short introduction. What is the experience creator? The experience creator basically allows you to create uh, an interactive experience for users to go through a journey um, to experience your space in a certain way. This can be used for e-learning purposes, educational, uh, onboarding new employees, marketing, anything you want. <clears throat> and this is quite a complex uh, solution of treaties. So that's why we're uh, creating this uh, long tutorial. So we can do like a step-by-step -step on how to create your experience. So to start off, you see you have your tours uh, list. And to add an experience, you'll just click on this uh, joystick icon to add, add an experience. Once you have that clicked, you'll see, for example, here that the icon is gone. This means that uh, you have the game features, experience features. Um, so before we start to look on how to actually create it, um, I always recommend to do uh, for the first step is to plan plan your experience. So what I, what I find easiest is to open the actual space on a floor plan mode, and then just plan out how you think the experience is gonna go uh, about. So for example, let's say today we're gonna to be building an onboarding experience for a new employee in uh, our offices. So we're going to have the experience start here, and we're going to want the uh, user to get some content over here. And then uh, this would be like the first area. Then we want uh, the second area to be maybe this area and have some more content here. And then uh, third area, have them come through here and then finish where he started. So the cycle is gonna be something like this. Start to finish. Uh, in terms of content, you would want to mark where your content's gonna be. So for example, we're gonna have information here, information here, information here. And you might also want to add uh, gamification features like uh, trivia logs, code logs, uh, sequence logs, for example. So I would mark them as well, uh, just to make sure where you want to put those kind of uh, features. So for example, we're gonna have one there and one at the end to kind of finish it off. And why is this important? Uh, first of all, it kind of puts everything into place. You have a script for your experience. You know, it's really well written. It's all kept uh, tight. You won't have users getting lost. Um, and the second reason is that the next step after planning is to add all the content. So before we even start to think about uh, creating different locks and different conditions, uh, we just want to add the raw content to the space. So what I'm going to do now after this is just go uh, into the tour editor and just add all the content that I plan. So this is my planning. I'm just going to do away with that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm just going to go into tags, add all my tags, for examples. Um, I want to have a tag right there in the middle uh, behind this chair. I'm going to go to my virtual staging and add all the content. And 
I recommend using virtual staging, uh, specifically VS Media, because as you can see here, this uh, sort of play button is really, uh, it's probably the best option for adding content to an experience for two reasons. First of all, you can customize uh, the icon, you can customize the size, and you can see there's sort of this animation that invites you to click on it. So that's this little toggle here, you see, enable animation. So if that's on, the, the, the media item will be going up and down. The second reason that I recommend using this media is because you can, in the actions, add experience pop-up. Experience pop-up is a more fancy pop-up, has a smoother design, and you can add also media and also written content. So for example, I can write title, um, first, first uh, stop, let's call it, description, uh, welcome to the onboarding process. And I can add either an image or a Vimeo or YouTube link. I'm gonna choose classic here just add that link over there save that and then i would go ahead and do that uh, throughout the space to all my different um vs items so uh now that i've added all the content to all the different uh, vs items uh and tags we can go and start building our experience. So we're going to start off with the general settings of the experience. Um, for those of you creating an experience for uh, demo uh, purposes, so know that you can create a whole experience and have it go live with the link and pitch that experience to a client. Um, and you still won't need to pay for it. Uh, the only thing uh, the, uh, you'll need to pay for the experience if you want to remove the watermark, the demo watermark. So this is basically saying, go ahead, start playing with this stuff, uh, pitch it to your clients, and if you get a deal, only then you'll need to activate the game and pay for the uh, subscription. So start off with the general settings. Uh, you might just want to give this uh, a name. Let's call it onboarding process. Um, you can have a background picture. Let's add a nice picture that I put here. Um, you can add credits for the end, who, who wrote the script. If you had some content that was produced by some studio, then you can put that there. You can have your registration field on or off. Uh, and we're just going to save that. So just to show you how this looks up until now, um, I'm just going to open the public link. And you have here your, sorry, that's not it. There we go. And you have your basic uh, reading screen where you can uh, fill out your name and start the game. Another possibility is to have a more fancy intro screen for the experience creator. Uh, you would do that by using your intro screen. So you would go back to the regular settings, click on intro screen, enable the intro screen, and then you can create, um, you can upload a background image or video. You can give it a title. So we're going to call it onboarding, onboarding process. Put a uh, email link over there. Maybe a description. Welcome to Greece. Let's save that. <clears throat> Let's 
actually choose. Yeah, okay. So now if I open the link, you see it's a bit more fancy. Um, and we have the title, the greeting message, and the uh, name field. Uh, the video isn't playing because of my uh, security settings on Chrome, but you would have the video playing in the background. Uh, okay, so now that we got the opening uh, set the screen, let's move on to other settings. Let's jump to gaming interface. So gaming interface is treaties allowing you to customize your experience as much as you can. Every single element in the game can be either uh, displayed or hidden. Uh, we have an indication for correct or incorrect answer. Uh, the finish screen that you'll see later on, the timer, the progress in points, the hints, backpack, game book, intro clip, outro clip, and um, button sound clip. So all of these can be either turned on or off. Intro clip, uh, I highly recommend adding this. I use the same one, uh, same link for the outro clip. These are kind of the clips that <clears throat> set the tone and like an opener and a closer to the whole experience. They wrap it up nicely. And you can add a customized sound clip to have a, just to make it feel better. Um, so you can pretty much upload any kind of sound you like. So let's save that. Uh, that's the gaming interface and we might get back to that. So when I show you uh, how it looks in the public link, moving on to game time, uh, you can define the, the time on the experience. And we have two types of timers. It's either a countdown timer or a stopwatch timer. You then limit the game time by minutes. Let's give it 60 minutes. Then you can have a time is up message. This would pop up if the user is still in the experience while the time is up. Uh, so you can just have this uh, image or again, YouTube or the mail link. And that's pretty much the timer. <clears throat> Moving on to hints. And we'll understand better about the hints when I get to the hints select uh, section of this tutorial. But you can also activate or deactivate hints and solution and define the time before revealing each hint. Then we go to the scoring system. You can either go for points or progress. Uh, score is given on solving of a lock. So depending on how many locks you have, that's the maximum uh, number of points that you can achieve. Each lock uh, gives you 10 points. So we can either do, for example, if I have 10 locks, we can either just go with points and with every lock you solve, you'll get another 10 points or we can go with progress and then we'll have 10 out of 100. And then as I move on, I go up 20, 30, 40 out of 100. I'll always see what's left to be done. Then you can also define uh, if you want points to be deducted from players if they use hints to solve these locks. Uh, first hint, second hint, and solution. And you can also add a tutorial clip uh, to the basic intro screen that I showed you before, not the uh, fancier one. Um, I would just recommend using the tutorial clip in your intro clip. So if you have some kind of opener with instructions or just something to give uh, an introduction about the experience, just have it all in the intro clip and then you're set, you're good to go. So that was general settings. Uh, we're gonna move on to locks. Let's just save that. There we go. Okay, so locks, what are locks? 
any kind of feature in the experience that requires uh, the player's action of solving, we refer to as a lock. Um, so we have five different types of locks with the exception of the path lock, which is has a different kind of behavior, and I'll get to that later. I'll just start with the first five locks. Um, you can add a code lock that would just open a keypad for the user to put in the correct combination. You can add a keyboard lock to have the just similar to the code lock, but instead of a keypad, the player would have to type in a word that uh, is the correct answer. Pop-up trivia lock, which is uh, a lock that we'll be using in today's tutorial for our onboarding demo. I'll show you that in a second. Uh, sequence lock, which we'll use that as well. And this is probably the most useful lock because you can use it in different variations to create um, sort of a story to the game. So basically the sequence lock is to, the player has to click on a specific item or items in a specific order to solve the lock. And then we have collect items, which is just um, the, the user would have to collect specific items within the space to solve this lock. Um, so I'm not gonna show you each one of these locks. Uh, we have uh, specific tutorials for each one that you can check out on our YouTube channel. I'm gonna add the relevant ones for our experience today. So I'll start off with a pop-up trivia one. Uh, we'll call it uh, opening question. And when we talk about locks, so a lock has to be placed in the space and it can't be just placed in the air, it has to be attached on a specific tag or polygon. So the specific tag for this one, I'm gonna choose tag. Uh, if you choose tag, then the uh, drop-down menu of the location is gonna be re the relevant one. So just uh, tags. So in this space, I only have one tag, which I call first lock, and that's the one I'm gonna choose. Then you can upload a correct sound effect or incorrect sound effect for uh, the right and wrong answers. And then you actually add a question. So the question can be just one plus one equals, and what's the answer to that? And then you have four answers where you can just put your answers in and you have to select the correct answer and save. And that's the first question. We can have uh, a few questions. Do you like trees? Hmm. Yes. Of course. Hell yeah. All of the above. Um, and obviously it's four, and we'll add that. Uh, you should also add an image to your trivia lock, which kind of um, adds just to, first of all, you can have some relevant uh, content there. Uh, if it has to do with, uh, for example, a mathematical question, then you can have some sort of uh, the math, uh, uh, formulas or whatever, but uh, just some branding you can put in there and you'll see it in the public link in a few minutes. So I'm just going to save that and I have my first lock is set up. It's going to be in my lock list. Uh, it has some info. I can delete it. I can edit it uh, easy and accessible. Then I'm going to move on to the sequence lock. Now, sequence lock, uh, as I mentioned, you can have the user um, click on a specific sequence of items. These items can either be tags or polygons uh, to solve the lock. So 
This can be uh, used for, for example, if you have a museum and you have six pictures of, for example, uh, history events, and then the player has to click on the sequence, the correct sequence uh, of the events as they occur throughout history. That's one possibility for using the sequence lock. The other possibility for using a sequence lock is if we want to create just a clicking event to uh, create some sort of a condition to happen. So for example, uh, in our case, what we're gonna do, we want to create a finish to the game. So the finish is gonna be the player clicking on the exit door. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add a, for example, this is uh, the space. So I added this exit door. This exit door is a VS medium, but how do I create that a sequence lock? I put a polygon on top of that. So the polygon is fully transparent. If I just see, if I just change the opacity, you see the polygon is there. I make it fully transparent. I, call, I named it, I called it finish. And then if the player would have to click on the polygon to actually finish the game. So I would just be creating a one click sequence. So I hope that's uh, not too complicated to, uh, uh, to get, but you'll see what I mean once we get the flow of the game. So I'm just gonna call this finish lock type, as I said, it's polygon. And then what I'm gonna have here, oops, let me just refresh that. Finish lock type is polygon, I have a finish. This is the list of polygons. If I had several, I click on that, and then that's the sequence. Notice that if I had uh, several items on the list here, I could have put uh, several of them, changed the order. I can even have the same item several times. So I can have the sequence uh, be clicking on the finish door four times, for example. But I'm just gonna leave it at one for now. Um, another two interesting features that we have here. So you can have the items highlighted. So if it's a polygon, you can have the polygon highlighted after it's being selected. So if it's a sequence of six images, like I gave the example of the museum, so you keep each item that was clicked on highlighted, that way the user understands what he already clicked on. Another thing you can do is define how many seconds it, it would take to reset the sequence if uh, no other action has occurred. So for example, if I start the sequence and then I just walk off to some other area in the space, um, then I can define that after 30 seconds, the sequence is reset and the player coming back would have to start it from scratch. Or incorrect answer that always restarts the sequence. And then I upload sound effects uh, for correct and incorrect uh, uh, solutions. And I can also add a sound effect for the selection of a specific item within the sequence. So that's it for now. I'm gonna click save over there. And I have my two blocks over here. So what I'm gonna do now, I'm just gonna show you how this looks on the public link. I'll just take a short uh, break to see how this looks. So we have the fancy intro screen. I put in my name, I click start. I have the intro clip, as you remember. I'm just going to skip that for now. And then I've began my experience. So notice that we have here, uh, when we spoke about the interface, we have my name, we have the game time, we have game progress, we have the game book, we have hints, and we have backpack. This all can be changed in the interface, can be switched off if irrelevant. Um, 
I'm just going to go uh, open the locks. So the first lock was on CAD, as we mentioned. I'm just going to open that. And you see here we have the picture we uploaded. The question is 1 plus 1 equals uh, 2. And the next question would be, do you have treaties? And it's yes, of course, and hell yeah, all together. So I'm just going to answer that. And we have the correct and incorrect uh, answer indicator that just jumped there. And notice how the tag uh, switched to a green check mark. If I would have gotten that wrong, it would have shown a red X. And then my next <clears throat> uh, lock would be the sequence lock to end the game. Before we end the game, I just want to show you um, the content that we uploaded on the VS Media. So you see, we have the clip, we have the title, first stop, welcome to the onboarding process. We have the text here. You're gonna have your logo here and we can skip that. So we can go through and see all the different content that we added to the experience. And when we're done, we can just click on the door, which would be basically solving the last lock because this is a one sequence lock. And then once uh, all locks in the experience are uh, solved, then the experience is over, which means I'll click here, correct sound, <coughs> correct uh, answer. Automatically the outro screen is activated. Let's skip that. <clears throat> I have the finished screen giving me my score, my time, and the credits. So that's uh, a really nice experience, but it's still a little bit flat and we want to add more content. We want to make it richer. That's where we add the path lock. The path lock uh, is the exception uh, to locks since it's not a lock that the user has to solve. It's sort of a guiding, uh, assistant to the player. And I'll explain. What you want to do is create some sort of navigation aid for the player to be able to take him from each content to the other and kind of show him the path of the experience. So I'm going to add a path lock here. We'll start off by giving it a name. We'll call it uh, just path, you hit save, and then you need to start adding steps to your path. So the step is uh, has several settings that you need to have here. So the first one would be just adding a title, just for your convenience. This won't be displayed in the public link. We'll call this first step then you can choose the movement type. So we have three types of movements for the path lock to take the player from one uh, location to the other. Um, one is instant, which means just instant teleport. The second one is fly, where <clears throat> you have sort of the walkthrough effect. And the third one is fade out, which is similar to instant, but just with the fade out effect. So we're gonna choose fly because it's much cooler. Then we add the description. The description is what's going to be displayed in the bottom navigation bar of the path lock. So we're just going to write something like, welcome, uh, begin by checking out our company song. That's going to uh, appear on the bottom navigation bar. And then we have to choose where we want it to take us when the user clicks on take me there. So we're going to choose the location. And the location is created out of two parts. The first one is an item. So this is the item I want um, the navigation bar to take me to, to look at. So I'm going to be looking at a specific direction. So we're going to start with uh, VS image, uh, first step. And then the second part 
is to choose the sweep, the actual location that I want to uh, be looking at the item I selected. So I'm just going to choose this entrance sweep. And <clears throat> you're also going to need to add the previous step, but since this is the first step of the path block, so just leave that blank, click add, and we have our first step in the path block. You can obviously delete or edit this. Now we're going to add the second one, just so you can see the flow of this uh, of things. So we'll just call it second step. And we're going to do the fly movement type. The description is going to be uh, maybe something like now. Let's check out another area location. So again, I'm going to choose the VS image that I want the user to click on. So we're going to choose second set. And we're going to choose the location within the space. I'm going to choose this one here. And previous step. Previous step is very important because previous step is basically uh, what's going to trigger the navigation bar to be updated for the next step. So previous step is basically choosing the item of the previous step, which in this case is a VS image, which is the first step. So this means that when the user clicks on the actual VS image of the first step, then the navigation bar is going to be updated to take me to the second step and display this relevant description. So I'm just going to add that. And I'm going to add two more. I know this is uh, probably one of the more complex features. So I'm just going to do it. Uh, I won't skip this part and I'll just add them all with you live. So this third one is the third step. Again, I recommend uh, choosing fly. It's the coolest effect. Description uh, almost done. Just one more station. Location, again, I'm going to choose a VS image. And notice that you can choose any kind of uh, object, whether it's a tag, a polygon, VS video, VS object. Uh, but like I said, I, I would recommend working mainly with VS images. This is going to be the third step. Uh, the actual location would be this one here. Then I would choose the previous step would be the second step. And I'm just going to add that here. And for my final step, final step, fly. Uh, let's just write, well done. Exit the door. Location is going to be the finish. And I'm going to do it from here. And the previous step was step three. So in the path lock, you're always going step by step. So the current step you're working on is always the previous of the next step. And that's very important to remember because all steps must be connected. Um, and our path lock is pretty much complete. Uh, just one toggle I want to talk about here. So what you would want to do is kind of hide all the, the, the VS items or the steps in the lock that are beyond the next step, because you don't want the player just wandering around and then checking out the third station before he checks out the second station. So if you toggle this on, then the, the, the user is always going to see the next step, the next step content, the next step VS media, and you won't see the VS medias of the future steps. So we're just going to save that. And if we go back to our lock lists, we have the pop-up trivia, the sequence, uh, which is pretty much the finish lock, and then the path lock. So 
I'm just going to show you, I'm going to take another break to show you again how this looks on the public link. Put in my name. Intro clip. Notice how we have this uh, nice uh, uh, guide that explains this obviously can be translated uh, by yourself on the platform. So you can translate this into any language. And notice how our pet lock is activated and started with the first step. Welcome, begin by checking out our company song. And notice that if I click on this, it would automatically take me to view the item that I want to look at. And if you look closely, then down here, there are no other items because they're all hidden since we toggled that toggle on. So I can only see this one. So even if I wander around the space and I get lost, I can always click here and it will take me to the location and view a specific item I want to view. If I click on that, I can see uh, the content and I can close that. And my path lock is updated and I can move on to view the next content. Let's skip that. And so on and so on. Okay, moving on uh, to conditions. Conditions uh, are what allow us to create some sort of storyline to the experience. So I know the path lock uh, helps with the navigation and taking the uh, user from the first stop to the second to the third, but the conditions uh, take that to a whole new level. We have three types of conditions. We have a reveal type, we have a pop-up type, and we have a high type. And I'll, exp I'll explain each one. So I'll start from the end, actually. A hide condition allows us to hide either an item or sweeps and have them, uh, they, they won't be visible to the user. Um, a reveal condition does exactly the opposite and it reveals either an item or sweeps to the user. And the pop-up just gives us a pop-up of content, whether it's text, video, sound, image, or whatever. Conditions have to be conditioned on the solving of a lock. So conditions can be uh, conditioned on any other item currently in the experience. So it's always gonna have to be um, when the user solves a lock, then this happens. So I think I'm just gonna go ahead and set the conditions for our experience and that would make it easier to understand. So first of all, I'm gonna start with the hide conditions. So, and I'm gonna start with the hide sweeps. So let's say, for example, I don't want the user to be able to go into any area that isn't relevant to the current uh, stage of the experience. So what I wanna do, I wanna block all these sweeps, I wanna hide them, and then the user won't even be able to access them. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna start off by giving this condition a name. Let's just kind of call it hide for start. And then I'm gonna mark all the different sweeps that I want the user to uh, be unable to access. And you can choose whatever color you want, depending on your floor plan uh, shadings. You might find a different color uh, more easy. So I'm just gonna go ahead and mark all these sweeps in the first floor. And I would select, I would normally select the lock that this happens after solving, but since it's for the start of the game, so I'm just gonna leave that blank and save that over there. So once we have that saved, I can also hide items. So for example, 
Let's hide some items. Hide for star. And what I want to, what I'm going to want to do is hide items that I want to be revealed only after the player or the user solves a specific lock. So, for example, we have that first lock straight in the beginning. Um, and let's say I want that to be the only thing the user sees. So I want to hide all the other VS uh, images. So I'm just going to uh, click the type as VS image. Then I'm just going to select all. And then uh, again, I would normally select a lock to have this happen after. But since it's for the beginning of the game, I'm just going to leave that blank. And I'm going to click Save. Now, after I hid uh, items and sweeps, what I'm going to want to do is uh, reveal them. So I'm going to want, after solving the first uh, lock, the pop-up trivia, I'm going to reveal the BS media. So what I'm going to do is uh, call this reveal BS media. I'm going to reveal all the media that I had hidden for the beginning of the game. And I'm going to select a, a lock for uh, revealing this. And it's going to be the opening question. I'm just going to click Save. I'm going to add that. And then I'm going to also want to reveal sweeps. So for example, let's say I want to reveal this uh, area down here. and maybe this area as well, and just have that uh, revealed after solving, let's call that reveal sweeps, after solving the opening question as well. Another interesting um, option that we have, in addition to revealing new sweeps, I can also teleport the user to one of those sweeps. So for example, I solve uh, the first lock correct, I have these sweeps revealed, and if I toggle that on, then I can choose one of the revealed sweeps to be teleported to. So for example, let's choose this corner one. Click Save, and we have that over there. And finally, the pop-up condition. I just want some content, maybe, um, let's call this content. Um, it can be whatever type of uh, content we wish. Uh, let's just say it's an experience pop-up. I choose the image that I want. And I select the lock. It's the open question. I can give a title. Let's call this uh, content. And put some more content here. Just tons of content everywhere. So after adding the uh, condition, you can also review your condition list here, edit them, delete them. Um, notice that there's a lot of info. And if you see after unlocking and it's blank, then this means that these conditions are for the beginning of the game. Now let's take a look on how it actually looks on the public link. So I'm going to start my game my uh, experience again. And we have it loading and there we go. So you see everything is hidden in the space. And in terms of sweeps, I can only go back and forward. I can't go to anywhere in the space even though I'm clicking on it. Basically, the only thing available is this tag, which is the lock. So once I open this lock <clears throat> and I solve it, so a few things are going to happen. If you remember, first thing, uh, some items are going to be revealed. Second thing, sweeps are going to be re uh, revealed, and I'll be teleported to another sweep. And the third thing is uh, we're going to get some content popped up at us. So let's see how that looks. I saw this correctly, content pops up. Um, I've, if I close this, you'll notice I'll, I've been teleported to the corner of the room. And then 
if I click on my padlock, then you'll see this uh, this uh, media has been revealed. I can click on that, get the first step. Then padlock will take me to the next path. I'll click on that. I'll see the next station. And then finally, I'll click on exit door. Finish uh, outro clip and finish screen. So that was the conditions. The conditions, um, whoops, there they are. Um, they kind of set more of a process, a journey to my experience. So now that we got the conditions done, I want to take a pause and go back to the gaming interface. So for this specific experience, um, we could use the correct uh, incorrect answer indicator. Uh, it's useful. I think that the timer is unnecessary because this is an onboarding experience. Progress also we can do away with. Hints. Um, I'm just going to touch on that in a second. Uh, backpack or it isn't relevant. You can check out the specific tutorial for the backpack that has to do with more of uh, scavenger hunts and escape rooms and and stuff like that. Uh, whoops. And the game book I'll reach to also in a second. So now that we kind of tightened up our um, our interface, let's just save that. And the next time I'll open the public link, you'll guys see how it looks. So moving on, let's move to hints. Hints basically allow me to help out my users. So I have a tough question, like what is one plus one? Um, so I can give hints for that. So very simple. I'm just going to add this uh, hint name. Let's call this first hint. And you select uh, what lock this will appear before and after. And then your hint can be either a text. So one plus one, uh, I don't know, just write think hard. Um, your second hint can be a picture, maybe a picture of one plus one or whatever. And then the solution, you can just put in two and have that saved. Uh, you click on add. Let's just put in some text again. Think harder. Um, now we have that hint over here and then if you remember in the general settings of the hints, I can choose which hint would be available for the player, for the user. I can choose that I want this uh, hard level game, so no hints or just one hint, or make it easy and give them everything. And then I can also define the time before revealing the next hint. So let's just define that five seconds and save the changes. And let's take a look on how that looks. So once again, an intro clip. And while editing these experiences, you'll be opening the experience again and again and again. Um, so uh, here we are. And you see the hints icon is here. I click on the hints. So I first... Uh, I'm prompted with the question if I want to reveal the hint because the hint can cause some point deduction if we're playing a points game. So I open hint A, think hard. If I want to reveal point B, I have the timer uh, ticking down until it's actually revealed. I open hint B, then I move to solution. I have to wait for the timer to die out. Open solution, the answer is two. Great, I got the answer. Good for me. So that's uh, hints. Um, I'd say hints is more relevant for also kind of scavenger hunts, games, and escape rooms, uh, less for our experience. So 
<clears throat> I am going to shut off the hints in the gaming interface because I feel they're a bit irrelevant. What is, a re what is uh, very relevant is our game book. Our game book basically allows us to have the user collect different uh, items and then have, give them the possibility to look back and review some of these items and tell the story. So the game book, uh, we start off by just putting a description. Uh, welcome, please review your book. We would add an image and the image for the book is recommended to be in a resolution of 834 pixels on 490. So this is the dimensions. Doesn't have to be on the dot, but close enough. So I'm just gonna select that, hit save, and then I can add chapters to my book. So the first chapter, and each chapter is going to be activated after clicking on a specific um, uh, VS or polygon um, or tag in the space. So first of all, I'm going to give it the title and the title is going to be displayed in the table of content of the book. So let's call this just first stop. The type I want this to be activated from is our first step of uh, this image. And then I'm going to upload an image to have in the actual book when I review the book. And I know this might sound confusing, but it'll work out uh, when I open the actual book. So I'm going to add another chapter here. We'll call it second stop. Again, this image, second step, let's choose another one. And finally, my third. Stop. And just add that, okay. So I'm going to uh, save that, everything's saved. Let's open the public link again. All right, intro clip. We have that here. Uh, so now you see on the side, we have our game book icon. If I open that, then I have the background of the book. I also have the different chapters and the chapters currently aren't clickable because they're not available yet. I didn't click on the uh, locations that I uh, defined in the book in the actual space. So this is my book. I can try to go to the other pages, but they'll be locked. Uh, so I'm just going to close that and I'm going to give the example, let's just run through this, I'm just going to give the example of clicking on a, one of the chapters that I defined its location. So if you take a look here, I'm going to click on this first stop, see the content. And now if I move forward in the space, and I want to view uh, content that was defined by uh, whoever created this experience, I can open the game book and you see first stop is now available. I can click on that. I see the content. Um, I would normally, if I'm adding something here, I would have a, uh, an image with some text with it. Uh, welcome, the first stop was so-and-so. We went over so-and-so. Just kind of give a recap to it. Uh, and as I move along, if I click on the next stop, then uh, second stop is also revealed in the book. And I can view that. I can run through the different chapters. And 
third stop obviously is still locked because I didn't activate that. So that's the game book. Um, and before we go to the analytics and kind of wrap this up for today, I just want to talk about the different aspects of the experience. So the experience of today that we were working on is an onboarding experience. We want to use um, blocks to kind of keep it interactive. We want to add quality content. We want to have the path lock to kind of guide the experience. We want to add conditions to give an even more uh, clear structure to the whole journey of the experience. And we also want to add content to the game book to give the possibility to recap uh, the whole experience while going through it. Uh, now I'm going to jump on the analytics just a little bit. The analytics allow you to see how your experience is being, uh, what the performance is on your experience. So you have here every entry to the game. Uh, with the name that was uh, inserted in the beginning, start time and date, what country uh, this was uh, from, the points that were gathered, the time, and if the experience was completed or not. So this is a huge, huge tool um, just, just to get you thinking for, uh, for your clients when you pitch this to your clients. So if this is an onboarding process, the employer always wants to know, um, have people been completing this experience, what the average time was, how many points did they score, are they scoring, uh, uh, you know, high scores. And uh, this is just a huge tool uh, for you to use as an upsell for your clients. So that was pretty much the experience creator for the day. I'm just going to uh, wrap this up by going back to the interface and showing you uh, the possibility of the finished screen. I know we spoke about this in the beginning, but if I turn off the finished screen, this allows me to uh, have the users continue walk around the space even after they completed the game. So if there's no finished screen, then the outro clip uh, would obviously be irrelevant as well. So I'm just going to show you how that looks. Let's skip that. And I'll show you how to translate that uh, guide in a second as well. So let's just run through this really, really quick. First stop, second stop, third stop. And you can notice now that if I open my game book, all chapters are available. And I'll exit the door. The answer is correct. Game isn't over. Um, experience isn't over. I can still walk around the space and um, I won't uh, reach the finished screen. So this is something that can also be suitable for um, some types of experiences. Uh, for now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it back on because we like closure. Uh, translations, as I said, I'm just going to touch on that. So to translate, you're going to go to your regular uh, tour settings hit translations, go to game features and scroll all the way down. And it starts here with guide and then so forth. And this basically translates the actual guide, but there's also more translations here, the hints, the uh, ending screen, uh, pretty much anything you can translate this, or you can also use it to customize it to your own uh, wordings. Uh, whatever you choose. 
Uh, so that was that pretty much. Thank you very much for uh, watching this long uh, tutorial. Again, be sure to hit the subscribe button, give us likes, let me know how this was in the comments. Feel free to send out any questions to our support email and I'll meet you all in the next uh, webinar.